while we're waiting for them uh, and, and to set up the stage here, uh, I'd like to go ahead and um, simply share that in my culture, the Thon Autumn culture, we are not allowed uh, to eat the meat of our first kill. It's always taken back, and, and this is how it works. There's an elder who will go along, your uncle, your father, your grandfather, with the young boy, and when the animal is taken, he makes certain, it's his job to make certain that you give thanks to the animal for giving of itself so that we may live on, and it lives on, actually, in, in us. A couple of years ago, oh gosh, a couple of decades ago, I talked to uh, a Vietnam veteran, and uh, I was asking, uh, because I was writing a paper on First Kill Stories, uh, whether he had uh, gone through that experience, and he said yes, and I said, how about your, your sons? And he said, oh yeah, we all went through it. And he said, we went out with my younger son. Uh, in the morning, he shot a rabbit we brought it into the village and gave it to a family that might not have access um, to fresh meat, either because they're elders or because there are no men in the family. And that, that tightens the bonds within the, the community. And the person who receives the meat will give thanks and say, you will be a good hunter. And it's felt that if you don't do that, then you're not going to be a good hunter. You won't have a good career. So I, um, my friend Homer said, my younger son and I went out, he shot a rabbit in the morning, we gave it to someone in the community, he must have really wanted to eat rabbit because he went out in the afternoon and shot one and ate that one. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that that holds true in other cultures and we've got three gentlemen who are gonna speak on, on the uh, matter of hunting within the communities as it is today. Can we move these chairs into the, can somebody move the chairs into the light? Oh, thank you, sir. We have Tito Naranjo from Santa Clara Pueblo, Alan Duran from Tasuke, and Jerome Martinez from San Ildefonso. They'll be talking about hunting and again, the Thanksgiving that takes place uh, for taking the taking of the animal. Again, it, it's important that you respect uh, the animal. And, and a lot of cultures believe that you will not see an animal unless it wants you to see it. And so there are some ceremonies I know that uh, take place before hunting where the animals are asked if they wouldn't allow themselves to, to be seen. How are you? Good. 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 Yeah, good. And the ticker's working okay. <laughs> My name is. <clears throat> I was out last night fishing until about maybe ten o'clock. Got caught in the uh, thunderstorm, lightning storm. Got wet from head to toe. Uh, it was fun. Caught some fish on um, a truck. I said, well, that was good. Anyway, yeah, I grew up hunting all of my life. Uh, I'm approaching 80. Will be this coming year. And I still hunt. I killed a deer last year. I killed a deer the year before. I go hunting, bow hunting, with my nephews. And uh, <clears throat> the table word for uh, uh, these animals that came out of the lake of emergence is po kanu. Po literally means water. Kanu means uh, to fall or fell. So, Pokano is a word that's referred to these game animals that apparently came out with us from the Lake of Emergence. 
You can't see my eyes, can you? Oh, I'll let you see my bald head. <laughs> <laughs> and that light is blaring. Anyway, so <clears throat> my father was a very good hunter, therefore I became a good hunter. But it wasn't because of my father that I became a good hunter. It was my mother who gave the marching order. And the woman, the extended uh, family woman, they would say, one deer won't do, two deer won't do, three deer won't do, four deer won't do, maybe five deer will take us through April of next year. And that's how important um, meat was to the family because what we were surviving on earlier was uh, corn and beans. And uh, I love beans. I'll eat beans every day, pinto beans, or any kind of beans. But it's kind of nice at the end of the, the season to eat some meat. Meat was always very welcome. So deer was a good source of food. After the original elk uh, were gone, the, the grizzly was gone, the big orange sheep was gone. But since they've been brought back, um, it, it's good to see them back in the high mountains. <clears throat> Plenty of elk. And until <clears throat> that, that cold got to me last night, soaking wet, um, and so mm, it was necessary because of those orders of the older woman for me to become a hunter. We also, what was happening in those days was that it was a lot more traditional. I remember the older men uh, when we were hunting talking about going to the the, um, to bandoliers, the monument of the stone lions, uh, to pray for a good, to give offerings for a good hunting season. And uh, that is written in W.W. Uh, uh, w. Hill's book, An Ethnography of Santa Clara Pueblo, that Santa Clara men would go to the shrine of the stone lions at Bandelier to give offerings in order to uh, have a good harvest of, of deer at the time, because that's all we had. The elk hadn't come back yet, weren't restored. So we were hunting primarily mule deer. But when the elk come, we took it very well, because the, there was a lot more meat. But there were stories that were left over, stories of uh, going uh, with the ciboyeros or the Spanish uh, bison hunters out onto the plains uh, because it was very important to get huge amounts of dried meat stored for the winter months. And uh, so my brother uh, Michael and I learned how to hunt early. And I think in order to be a good hunter, one has to be somewhat athletic you have to have endurance and you have to climb high mountains or if you're um, an endurance hunter or you must have stamina because Tsikumo, our, the mountain on our res reservation is 11,300 and the uh, um, forest line is right under 1100. So to climb up at 1100, and for big horn sheep you have to climb up to 12,000 and over. The mountains here in New Mexico, up here in the Pecos Wilderness, the Wilderness are up to 13. So you have to climb over those mountains in order to look into basin after basin after basin, and then uh, to, to search. But one had to really have a sense know the animals, and that's what I learned from my father, 
how to how to get a feel for the fall time, the aspens where the deer fed, uh, the open meadows when they came out to feed and eat, and then especially when the snows came. Some of the kinds of things that hunters learn early is that falling snow dampens everything, quiets the forest. Meaning that if you get on the tracks of a deer, the deer is not likely to hear you coming like they do on dry sticks and dried aspen leaves and so on. So, but you have to always be aware of the wind. And, you know, these kinds of things you learn early. Uh, you learn as you're, you're hunting with, with elders who have hunted before, parents who have hunted. They were, they were good models that taught you how to do it. I was hunting with my father-in-law and um, Joe Schwazo from Tazpa, and uh, we got him help. And the first thing we, we did was, he said, we have to, to thank this animal. And so we took out the entrails, opened the stomach, and then he took out his medicine bag, took his stones out, <clears throat> And he put it in the middle of this ring. But he also put some fur tips on there. And he said, we do this now so they can always give themselves to us. We connect with the animal. So, <clears throat> um, so we gave cornmeal as is, is usual, to give cornmeal to the animal. And then you run your hands along the deer to take his breath, to make sure that, that his breath is living, his soul is living in you. It's a nice little deer. Um, what a bad fool. <laughs> so, um, when we got the that was a, a spike bull that, that we got. Um, and I don't talk too long because there's three of us. Uh, he told me, the women are going to make a big fuss because we took out the stomach. And indeed, they, they did it. We got the animal to Taz Pueblo, and the first thing he said was, you don't got the animal, you bring the whole thing. Because we eat everything. The liver, the stomach, the entrails, everything is food. So nothing was thrown away except for the grass that they had eaten. And some of that, as the Eskimos know, had lots of vitamin C in it. So, uh, the woman scolded us for not bringing the entire animal. And so I said, well, you're supposed to tell me that, that that's necessary in Taos Pueblo. But when I, I brought him a deer, he would always, when I brought my mother-in-law and father-in-law a deer, they would always, he taught me how to sing the Taos Pueblo deer then which kind of just the ditty of it goes like
and the basket of corn came out first. And they would put the, the animals hid in there to offer uh, cornmeal, to, to get the cornmeal. And then to say, this we do not. This was all in Tiwa, but also in Tiwa. This we do know now to honor our brother, and then this we do now so that we may in turn be honored when we go out again to, to hunt. Santa Clara's dear dance song is vast and different. It's full of words, beautiful poetic words. And uh, I, I heard John sing that at the, the last one. <coughs> and song, we knew all the names of the mountains from Sikumu to Kuapon to Kosumu to every, every mountain had a name and played the um, We always hunted and played. The, the whole place was Khaje Hinti. The place was right with names. And you had to be with elders who knew the names because they could tell you where they were finding deer. Uh, anyway, one of the songs in Santa Clara goes like, Now being an elder, 
Um, the, that is unfortunately being passed by, but here's a good example of what's, uh, you know, what we do with the deer. The whole thing is used, really, as the woman on top will reiterate, and as my, my extended great-grandmother said, you know, it is your duty, and my father said, we don't quit until we get uh, deer, we have to go out again. Because we have to have dry meat cleared through March and April and May before the new crop comes in. But we live with those animals on a daily basis. So uh, I think uh, I have Jerome, Jerome, my right. And then this is Alan, I believe.